always have a quick invitation before we go on. Um, sometimes I speak to the company extemporaneously. I said something that I wanted to share with you, and I think all of you will agree and also share this feeling with me. Um, dancers and musicians, probably most of our careers, always argue about which came first, uh, the movement or the sound. And so, certainly the musician's position is that uh, nothing happens without music. And even when you breathe, it makes a sound. And the dancer's reply is that but it's the movement that creates the sound. <laughs> Needless to say, but it's important to say that they probably are both married. And no, while there are wonderful dances that have been created by many people uh, in silence, music moves everyone on this planet. And, and, partic and particularly movement moves us as a people. Movement moves, music moves. And we are in one of the greatest places in the world with some of the greatest, greatest music. This is a legacy of, of, of music that we are celebrating today. This is a legacy of sound, or to quote Diane McIntyre, sound in motion, sound in motion. <laughs> there were times where our musicians would go to a concert and be chased back to the bus. There were times where there were no microphones, no stage, no lights. Times where there was just a wash tub, a pole, a string, and their bodies. And they did a Grammy Award winning performance before the Grammys were ever even created. But the Grammys need to be given an amazing degree of credit and respect. Because what the Grammys did long before many other organizations in America did was acknowledge African American genius and acknowledge their brilliance by giving the spirit of our people an award to say that you are the best in the world. And we knew that they were the best. But they were acknowledged by the Grammys that they were the best. So we thank the Grammy Committee and we thank the Grammy Big Wigs <laughs> for acknowledging our artists. Just very quickly, Quincy Jones was a pioneer. Quincy was an amazing writer, composer, arranger who was one of our first brothers who cracked the motion picture industry alive. And I thought that it was befitting many, many years ago, 1980, to do something to acknowledge my respect and my love for Quincy's work, but also for another group of pioneers and to marry his genius with the genius of those black folks who we didn't hear about for a long time, but thanks to William Lauren Katz and the Black West, and thanks to Black Indians, and thanks to Dr. Ivan Van Serten, we know that our people did an amazing job in the development of the West, made contributions to develop, that, 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 that they developed bulldogging and, and all those tricks with the guns. You know, you see how brothers when they be dancing and doing that? You know, that that's what they did. We did that with the guns. We did that. We did the tricks with the ropes and the dancing in and out, outside of the ropes. And the quick and biting steers on top of their noses and wrestling them to the ground. That was our dancing and our music. So Quincy saw the genius of the, the Black West and the Buffalo Soldiers and said, let me do something. Let me take this sound and this music and create visuals to music so that when you hear the music, you will see the Buffalo Soldiers. So I said, Quincy, we gotta acknowledge that with a ballet. We were, I had the privilege of, 
um, for the second time in my life, um, meeting um, Stevie Wonder the other night, um, thanks to the members of my company. Yes, give Stevie a big hand. And all of us were sitting um, at the uh, Iridium listening to two other musical geniuses, Ron uh, Carter um, and Gary Barts. And they came up to Stevie and they asked Stevie if he would sit in with them. Most people think that Stevie is basically a pop artist. Well, some of the young people do, you know? Not, not you old heads. <laughs> but the young folks do. And Stevie got up and Stevie went to the microphone and he pulled out his harmonica, and he did an unaccompanied company jazz harmonica solo that was probably the last thing that I heard like that was when Train did it in 1964 at the Village East. It was brilliant. But the more brilliant thing was when he came back to the table, I asked him, I said, Steve, you know a lot of times when the dancers go on stage, they are afraid, or there is a fear and anxiety because they want to be good for their audiences. And you are one of our living geniuses. Brother, do you ever get scared? Right before you get on stage? And he said, well, I wouldn't call it scared. I wouldn't call it fear. He said, what comes up for me is that I always want to give my people and whoever's listening to me my best. I always want them to acknowledge that I've given them my best, whether recording or live. So it's not a fear, it's my desire to be good, not just my, for myself, but for the people listening to me. And then he said, and what helps me is to know that it's not just me on stage, but it's God coming through me. <laughs> so on that note, because I got an ashe <laughs> on stage. We're going to dedicate something that we generally do at Kwanzaa. It's the Nguzo Saba. We're going to do a short version of it. And we're going to dedicate this to all of the Grammy Award winners because through them, they have helped us through their industry and their talent, certainly create unity, self-determination, um, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. And we are going to have a bang and go out with the Nguzo Saba because our Black Grammy Award winners are one of the best examples of the Nguzo Saba we can think of. Thank you.
so that we may define ourselves, name ourselves, speak for ourselves, and create for ourselves, instead of being defined, named, spoken for, and created for by others.
effective vocation, the building and development of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. Dr. Maya Angelou.